Good afternoon. <clears throat> Welcome to usability testing. It's uh, or user empathy. It's been a while that we've met, almost uh, a week, but almost like, or two weeks. It feels like it's been a long time. I hope you had a good reading week. I know this. We are almost at the end of uh, week eight, back from reading week. But I hope uh, you managed to have a bit of time to uh, enjoy the time off. But I do know that you were very busy as well with school. So we are in together today until three. And um, I don't know that we are going to need the entire session. So we'll see. It depends on where the teams are in terms of conducting the usability test. So before we actually talk about usability testing, I'd like to talk a little bit about user flows and flows and um, and user task and user flows, but particularly about user flow and wire flows, but very, very briefly. So this is about 5111, so our 5111 course, which we have tomorrow. So um, because now we are past the midterm, uh, tomorrow, uh, ASMA will be taking over the course, uh, but I will still be engaged in the course for the usability testing piece of the big project. So. There, um, with ASMA, you're going to be working on a big project, which is about 40% of the uh, of the mark for this class, and um, and then in this course, 5112, we're going to do a usability testing or final project for usability testing is in conjunction with 5111. So this is how I will be connected with tomorrow's course, but really, um, I will not be teaching 5111, which is tomorrow. Uh, ASMA will be taking over, but I will come at the beginning to introduce you to ASMA and uh, just to uh, doing a hand off. Uh, but we did meet uh, myself, ASMA, and also Yvonne. We had a good meeting yesterday to uh, discuss the, the big project that we all have in common. So with ASMA, or, uh, and I think Yvonne actually may come in to one of the uh, ASMA sessions to talk about wire flow, but I do want to share with you, um, it's part of a reading that we had uh, last week, and I don't know if you had a chance to go through the reading, I have seen that some of you actually have submitted uh, their, um, their, um, their assignment for the flow. But if, uh, if you've had a chance or not had a chance, this is, a, this is taken from a, also a, pro, a PowerPoint and a presentation that Yvonne has uh, done and shared with me for user task and user flow that I made as a reading. So we're looking right now at an example of user flow. And if you remember, the user flow is what the actual user will see when they come to a site. So you're trying to describe the experience, the, the steps and the sequence of the, uh, the screens or the options that are presented to them. So one way that we've learned last week from the video is that there are certain symbols that you can use and, uh, and then this deck has uh, a list of symbols that you can use and then the, the, the readings and also the PowerPoint that I have shared with you also included some symbols. You just have to pick a symbols that you're familiar with, but you will see that there are some common ones that are being used. And, uh, and then Yvonne will be sharing again with you um, a, a different way of showing a user flow uh, for online using what we call the wire flow. So the wire flows look like this. And uh, if you see, it's the flow. So it's a sequence of steps. Uh, and we can actually imagine that we're going from left to right. But instead of using the boxes, so instead of using boxes for starting a process, a decision point, we are actually using the uh, uh, low fidelity wireframes uh, you could use the high fidelity wireframes. It depends on how far you are in your design. And, uh, and then you're using the actual wireframes to show the flow or the sequence between screens and also what happened when you click on certain options. So that is what we call the wire flows. Um, this is uh, one version. So this is probably low fidelity. These are seems to be a little bit more low fidelity wireframes. And then you see landing page, uh, the text entry screen. So uh, there's an option to click, and then when I click, then I get to uh, a second screen, which is this screen, and then there are other options that I can show. So you're illustrating, again, a flow or a particular flow using screens instead of processes or decision points. And, uh, and then you can put annotations as well, I would assume. And uh, this is one way, and this is another example of 
a wire flow where we use the wireframes. And these, I would say, are not as, um, as they're probably even more low fidelity. They're still very black and white boxes. Um, and you show the behavior of certain functionality and then really screen by screen in the sequence in the order that the user will actually see it. And I will say, this is probably a better representation than the boxes. And I will use this. And when I say this, I'm actually thinking of one of usability principles or heuristics that we've learned in class. Why would it be, why do we think that it's actually, this might be actually easier from a psychological point of view than looking at a bit, bunch of boxes like this, instead looking at wireframes or wire flows to explain the UF flow. Anybody has a, want to take a, a try, a guess, as to why do I think that it's a better approach to show the wireframes as opposed to boxes using one of the principles? Recognition instead of recall, right? You're actually presenting a lot more information. Visibility, you're showing the screen, you're showing the actual screen. It's a lot easier to connect with the experience and you're re you can recognize the options that are available on the screen. You can actually see uh, what almost like what it looks like from a user point of view. So that is why I would say that the wire flows are probably even easier and better to use. Uh, for a user. So you will be uh, hearing about wire flows. And I think that Asma will have in her assignment, she may have a piece where she wants you to do the wire flows, to illustrate the wire flows. Ivan was, seems to be very confident that you guys are almost at the step to start doing your wireframes and also your wire, your, your flows, the wire flows. And uh, now, if you want to ask her or them if you can do the user flow with the boxes, uh, it will. You can ask, and they may say you, or they may say nay. But uh, it will be up to them as well. So I wanted to share that a little bit with you. So you're gonna hear wire flows, and uh, you can look at the readings that I have shared with you. You can actually Google and learn more about wire flows. But it will come. So now I'm closing the parentheses. Now I'm moving back to fifty-one twelve. So uh, at this point, almost every team should have done all of their sessions. You should have completed the sessions with the participants. I have actually a team that has submitted some of their individual sessions. And I actually really like what the team, the Lululemon teams. Uh, so I had a chance to look at what the Lululemon team have sent. Very well done. Um, I really saw the raw data. I see all the notes that all the uh, individuals have taken. What they've done is into one summary, into one document, they've put all of the raw notes. So I saw like the notes, everything that everybody had typed on the team from Lululemon as observer. And uh, they've done a very, very good job at showing me who was the participant, who was the moderator, who was the observers. And then I see the notes. So if Bernice was uh, the one doing the observation, I see Bernice notes and then I saw uh, Cindy and I saw Moon. So I saw everybody's note all in one document. Um, that was really, really critical. And now what everybody has done on the Lululemon team is they've sent me uh, each individual. So let's say Bernice has sent me her video, one video when she was facilitating. So that was good because from there I can actually see the video. And uh, we're actually going to look at one of the video today just so that we have a bit of a discussion around facilitating the session. So uh, very well done, Lululemon, and uh, haven't marked yet, but I will be marking when I get all of the uh, the submission. So I'm assuming and I'm hoping that everybody has participated, actively participated as either a moderator or as other observator doing observation and taking notes with a new team. So on the topic of evaluation, if someone on your team has not participated to the level that everybody else has participated, please send me a course message. Uh, I really, really uh, take this very seriously in terms of participation. In this project or this piece is so critical, uh, you cannot do it alone. So you needed to have people to help you and participate and be a team. If someone has not uh, participated and uh, does not have a valid reason, which is a medical reason, and uh, I like to know because I will, um, and I'm hoping that you have addressed it with the individual if this has happened in your team. But very important, 
everybody has to participate. And if you haven't, uh, it will affect the mark. It will affect uh, someone's mark. So, uh, and I will do revisit the, the mark. So for example, if someone only participated at 50%, they will get 50% of whatever they participated in for that particular piece. So uh, conducting the sessions and also uh, sitting down and starting doing the analysis and doing the brief is very important. It's done in the team. And if uh, people are not participating, I need to be told. So it's not about uh, reporting on people. It's it's uh, it's only fair for all the team members. Plus, it also uh, if you participate, you will learn more about how do we do use about testing. So very important. Please don't be shy to reach out to me by course message. Of course, it's all confidential. I will not reveal any names, but uh, I will definitely going to have a conversation with individuals that have not participated and uh, nobody needs to know and you do know if you've participated if you've done your fair part or no you will know who you are uh, but i'm hoping everybody has participated um, in in all sessions in all capacities so what we're going to do we are actually going to look at a uh, a session but before i do this are there any questions or any comments or about uh, the process of what has happened until uh since we've seen last seen and then and since today in terms of conducting sessions and i i'm assuming some of you probably have started doing some analysis because i think i saw a summary from google lemon are you all being shy or you're just very tired Shy and tired? You're usually not shy. This is not a shy class. So, hi, Marisa. Hi. Oh, yes, you can hear me. I do have a quick yes. question. So, for this stage, what we're supposed to be handing in this week, are you expecting us to have done the analysis or just the raw data? So let me just look, because I've got so many classes and so many assignments. I just want to see what it is that I've asked that you specifically submit this week. Submit raw data and results, right? So for Friday, I just need to see all the, uh, the. I think I've said I'd like to have also a high-level summary as well. So, well, let's see. Uh, let's see with how and where all teams are the usability the final usability report is due by next friday so do we feel at least have we all completed all of our sessions at this point okay and have we started doing analysis do we have we've done analysis Okay, so we have started doing analysis and uh, kind of started the analysis. And today we are starting the analysis as well. We're going to talk about analysis. If we have to change the date to maybe midweek for next week, but then you have the report as well, right? Um, that is due on Friday of next week. So uh, I may be able to extend this Friday's, but I would really like to have a high level summary of what you found. It's your findings, right? It's the story. And the findings and then your reflection, like thinking about, so what happened really during the session? Beyond what we've seen, what are the big ha-ha or what are the big uh, findings that are the big outcomes of all of our sessions? So uh, to answer your question, Marisa, I definitely need to see all the notes that have been taken by everybody on the team uh, in a very raw format. And I will share with you an example that I got from Lululemon. Uh, if by Friday, you can also do a summary, a high level summary. And what is a high level summary is since at this point, you've done all of your session, uh, you could, and if you haven't, then today we can do that. You should step back and think about what did we see? What did we overall feel that we've saw or what has happened in, in all of our sessions? And, uh, and then you may, there's many ways of doing this. The first way that you can do is you start with all of your tasks and you start with the first scenario. Let's say that your scenario was find a book on Indigo. Then you say, let's look at the task for find a book for Indigo and let's discuss what we've seen and what happened. So, uh, and then you just all talk um, with all the team members 
and uh, and that means that you actually go through your notes, right? But at this point, you're kind of trying to get a, a high level sense of what happened with that particular experience. And then, then you do that with the second task and the third task and maybe the fourth task, depending on how many you had. Then you'll get a bit of a feel of what happened overall in all sessions for all, each task. And you could do some bullet points and you could attach that to your, uh, to your Friday delivery. So, uh, but then next Friday and for this week and next week, uh, but by Friday next week, we have to submit the final report. So you will need to do your, as much of the analysis between now and I will say midweek so that you can write your report for next Friday as well. So uh, it's, it's condensed, but this big report, just be, um, if that helps you, uh, for the big project that we do next with tomorrow with uh, actually the big project that we will do, we're not going to need to do as much of an extensive report. The report for this assignment is the biggest uh, because I need to make sure that you understand how do we do like a, 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 a full report. But uh, for our final usability testing that you will do for your project for like Netflix and uh, Uber Eats and all of that, it's not going to be a, a deep and report like we are going to do for this assignment, but we need to do at least once. We need to go through that process once. So I don't know if this is answering your question. Uh, so Friday, if you can have a summary, but if we are saying that on Friday, we're not going to be able to have a summary, then I'm going to push the date to a bit uh, later at the beginning of the week so that you have a bit more time to debrief. But typically, it's better to debrief very close after you've completed all the session because it's still fresh in your head, right? So perhaps it sounds like we may want to do a small pushback. So let's see at the end, before the end of today, uh, most likely I think there will be a pushback to maybe Monday and Tuesday. Um, and uh, But don't delay your your uh, the report for next week for next Friday as well. If we need to delay the report for next Friday, then we can then talk about, then discuss next week uh, what that is. I want to make sure that we do good quality, right? So I don't want to hand into a report to hand into a report if there's no code quality. So let's take one step at a time. But it sounds like we may be pushing Fridays to maybe next week, maybe Monday or Tuesday. So we can, we can decide on that. But let's see how far we go today, OK? So good, I'm glad to see that everybody had uh, all sessions have done and all sessions have been completed and uh, and then what I thought that we could do is actually let me show you the an example of the raw the data of a submission that I have received and uh, nothing is really confidential so I think we should be able to share as teams nothing has been marked I'm not sharing a mark I'm just going to share with you what I have seen for one of the submission from Lululemon's team in terms of raw data that they've submitted. Okay, we can all see. So this is from the uh, from Lululemon, and uh, and then so they've already done the summary. And they've had a chance to sit down and do a bit of a summary. I haven't looked at the uh, how extensive their summary is. Uh, the desk of the summary yet, but it looks like they've attached a summary, uh, and uh, which is good. But let's see. So they've, you know, in terms of what I was expecting for summary and Ronald at this point, uh, it's it's share. So the screen is share. Can you all see the summary, Lululemon? So maybe it's you, Marisa. So yeah, so everybody can see. So they have included a, a summary and uh, and then also trends among all sessions. So that's, I would say that that's pretty good. So issues, what they found. So they've said summary, we found the following new issues. Uh, what was expected. So I think what they meant by what was expected is we went into sessions with anticipation, right? We thought these would be problematic because you've done the heuristic evaluation. So I think they're saying it's been validated that the trouble, people are having trouble booking appointments for in-store visit. So when they've done the heuristic, they said we think booking an appointment for in-store visit will be a challenge. So let's see in the session if it is indeed a challenge. So I think they've said confirmed, validated. Booking an appointment is a hard, is a, a challenge. 
trouble finding for a store locator as well. So it sounds like when the session, people were having a challenge finding the store locator. Um, and then they've said also, here are some of the trends that we found among all sessions. So that's good. That's a very good. And I don't think that you need to be even more detailed for the summary. So, um, so I can tell that the team has sat and sat and said, what did we find? Now they've chose this way of grouping the issues. There's not one way of grouping the issues. It's really up to you, you will define. But put yourself, uh, think of me as the client. You don't have to include recommendations at this point, Sarah. Yeah, no need to include recommendations. At this point, no need to talk about recommendations, no need to talk about solutions, no need to talk about uh, the priority is it high severity or low? If you want, it's good, but no, I really need just to see at least the raw data and uh, and see that you've actually had a chance to have a conversation and see what have we seen, but very high level. Uh, don't go in too much depth, but you will have to go in more depth uh, by doing all the analysis and the reporting. So they've done a summary and then here I see the raw data. So they've said, they give me a header and they said, uh, here's the raw data. And then they've put the participant name, the facilitator, the note taker, the observer, they're very detailed. They put the date and the background info as well. So they've shared the background info and the background info maybe came from the, the screener or the background info maybe uh, it was their first question in their moderator script, you know, where they've said, so Alan, uh, tell us what do you know about the brand? Have you been to the site, right? So very well done, I can see. So me, I wanna see that. The team has done their sessions and the team have taken uh, notes as well. So I can really see, and then they've done, you see, they've put all of their note taker. So another participant and uh, this team actually went external. So, uh, which I don't remember if I said we were to do a facilitating session with people in the class and go outside. If you've gone outside, it's even better. Uh, and I will say this is, they're very courageous. They actually went outside no practice they just went outside to the real world this is great so what means what that means them is for our final project for those of you that have not done it outside then i would say i would encourage you to go outside for uh netflix or uber eats or whichever product that you are but if you have to done outside you could do then maybe with an inside uh in our class with someone within our class here's the the pitfalls using someone in our class because you are UX and you're either your UX and your UX designer, you're not going to get the same kind of feedback and the same value from having someone external who doesn't know anything about what we do. You get a lot more insight and more insight or closely more from what you will see in real world than having people like us who do this all the time. Uh, we're all a bit contaminated by UX and good design, but very courageous from uh, Lululemon. And you can see that they've taken a lot of notes, uh, very, very thorough uh, in their notes. And, uh, and then I can see all the notes that everybody has taken for all of their participants. Uh, I haven't counted how many are there just to make sure that everybody has done all of the participants that they should, but I can see that the information is there. So that is at the minimum what Friday as well. Okay, so uh, we're going to talk a little bit about how do we how do we go about doing analysis, and that's really uh, that's really uh, what we will be discussing today. So at this point, you should, or at the end of the other session, you should have felt, or you should feel very over overwhelmed with all the data and all the sessions. Is that a fair statement? Do we feel do we feel a bit overwhelmed with all of the data and everything that we've seen? No? Oh, we forgot about it because it's been a while. Do you feel, did you feel overwhelmed after doing all the sessions? Did you have a clear understanding of what, all of what happens or you went, wow, there, there are a lot of things that we've seen that have happened in the sessions and, uh, and then we have all these notes and we don't really know where to begin. Do some of you feel about like that? Do you have a bit of that feeling at this point?
You should. Or if you don't, it's because you've already done your analysis. Do I have a team who's already done their analysis, like who went through all of their observation and all of their notes? You've done coding. We're going to talk about coding. Have you done, do we have a team that has done like a thorough analysis of all of the notes and all of the observation? Okay, Anna said there was a lot of that happened. Some stuff was really small, so it felt a little overwhelming trying to make sure we capture everything. Yes, there's going to be small things. There's going to be big things. There's going to be um, things that maybe have happened only once, right? Absolutely. Um, and uh, I will say, though, now, perhaps if you don't feel overwhelmed, it's because we did not do sessions that last for an hour, but I did see some Lululemon session that went for 44 minutes. So the team was really, really serious about doing uh, all of their tasks and that's okay. But when you do an hour sessions and you have 45 minutes of doing uh, sessions you and you have eight, nine, 10, 15, I've done 20, like I've done usability testing with 20 participants, you are like, you swim in data. And, uh, and I will say every time that you, you do a use about it testing, you go home and you go, wow, there's so much. And, and sometimes you go, or it can be the complete opposite. And you will say, I don't really know that there's really anything really major, major that has happened. And that's okay too. That might happen. It's really when you start doing the coding and you start going through all of the nodes that you really start seeing really what has happened. And then you go, wow, a lot of things happen. Now, high set. Some of it is actually bigger, and you may actually realize that there's some things that have happened that you did not even notice. And this is why we do this in teams. Other people in the teams may actually have seen things that you haven't seen. So you will see that. You will see some of this. So you have no choice but to go through all of the notes. Everybody has to go through each of their notes. So everybody who's done observation will have to go each of their notes and code. They'll have to do a coding for, uh, for everything that I have noted. Now, it looks like the Lululemon have taken a lot of notes. So I don't know if you have all have taken a lot of notes. But if you haven't, you will run into a challenge of you're not going to have a lot of data. But when I look at Lululemon, they've taken a lot of notes. So um, and so I'm, I'm hoping that there'll be a lot of data, there'll be a lot of findings and a lot of insight that will come from the report because they've taken a lot of notes. Now, what you will see though, some of the notes will start repeating. They will repeat themselves. So it takes time when you start. At the beginning, it takes really a lot of time. The first, uh, the first two or three observations, or let's say the first one observation will seem very cumbersome because you have to go through each and you have to code everything. Now, as you do your second task or as you do your second participants, you will see that things will repeat themselves. So then at that point, what you can do is you can, you, you're probably going to go quicker through your coding and, uh, and then you may just do a check to maybe filter and say the same problem has happened with the same participant with a different participant. Let's say that store locator. So perhaps Lou Lemons that the store locator for participant one, uh, he was actually not able to find the store locator. And uh, and then it took him quite a long time and he went to the to the footer. Then he maybe she's coded store locator, uh, difficult to find, and uh, and then we go to the second participant and the same thing has happened, maybe the store locator. So she would have a note for the store locator, hard to find. And then, um, and then perhaps what she could do or whoever isn't coding at that point could just put the check mark to participant one or the first row where we've said, we've already said store locator, hard to find. Then we put another check mark so that we know this there twice, this has happened twice. So you get a bit of sense of quantity. Uh, but as you do your participant three, your participant four, you will see things are being repeated and you do check mark for on your previous maybe list of coding as well. That's a good way. But you will see you will get efficiencies as well as you go. So um, let's go on the uh, the PowerPoint. So I have I have a few readings today that for this week that will uh, are meant to help you with some of the uh, some of the way that you can do your analysis. So I really strongly encourage you to actually take a look at some of the readings. And, uh, and then uh, I also have obviously a, a PowerPoint that we're going to go and share a little bit 
of the uh, of some of the insights, but it's there for you to review. So it's all about analyzing, doing the analysis and doing the reporting. But at this stage, okay, so at this stage, don't worry yet about reporting. Don't worry yet about reporting. Don't worry yet about how critical this issue is or how uh, bad this issue is for the user in terms of severity. Don't worry about severity and don't worry about reporting yet. And don't worry about structure. Don't worry about how am I going to structure my report, okay? Don't worry about this. It's not relevant. It's too early. Uh, really focus on, we're just going to go through all of the data and coding the data. That's really what we're going to do, and we'll talk a little bit more about this. And let me share my screen for the uh, for the presentation. Just so that you know, we are spending a lot more time on analysis than I have in the past, and because I found that we needed to spend more time on analysis, so we have two weeks of analysis. So, uh, but I do know that next week you have to submit in the report. But you have more time, and I'm sharing with you also more insight on how we do it than I have in the past with any other classes because I felt like it was a bit missing. So uh, at this point, as we've said, we're assuming that all your sessions are, are are conducted. You have videos, so you have session videos. Make sure that you keep them in a safe place, and uh, and then at some point you will want to be able. You just will want to delete them. Um, so that there's no, no one will have access. Because remember, we are, we have to be ethical and we have to be, uh, we have to make sure that our videos are just used by us because uh, this week that's what we told them. And uh, no one should have access to those videos. And if when you're done and you've done, and rarely are you going to go back and review the videos, right? So, uh, and, but they're there sometime because the client wants to see them as well. But at some point, you actually want to delete the videos when the research is done and the findings have been communicated. Uh, then you have to decide how long. I don't really have a rule of how long you would keep the videos, but at some point, you want to go and delete them. Then you have all of your raw notes from all of your sessions, and you could probably have, hopefully, maybe you've saved them all into a G drive in one place. Everybody has access to them. And then uh, Lululemon has put them all in one document and send me that. And that's exactly what I want to see. Then debriefing your no notes with your team. So I don't know if you had a debrief yet. If you haven't, you should. Um, and typically, you would do a debrief with your clients too and your customer and maybe the developers, anybody who came as an observer, you may have a debrief with them. So typically, this will happen. And they're very, very keen. They want to know what happened. What did we find on that topic? You may have um, a client in real life. You may have a client that will come to one, two sessions. And let's say that you have 20 sessions that are scheduled. Uh, that means that they're only going to see a few sessions and they may actually not see the full picture and the full story of what has happened, right? So at the beginning, I've talked about managing, managing the client, managing the people that are coming behind the, the window. Managing them is going to be where you have to be very, very good at relationship and managing your customer and managing them and pushing them to um, to uh, to stay still and watch. They will see one or two sessions and they may actually just remember that one and two sessions. So, and when they will leave, let's say when they will leave that session that night, they may actually tell you, oh my God, like the site is so bad, wow, wow, wow. And they may actually want to go in solution and they may actually want to say, you know what, I'm going to go to the to, uh, office and I'm going to tell people they have to fix this. Then you have to say, no, wait. Too, it's too early. Uh, so that's part of managing your client. It's the same thing with the developer. It's the same thing with the coder. Everybody will want to go and start making changes. So what you want to do is you want to discourage them from doing that. You want to say, hold off, hold off, hold off. We only see one day. We've done one day. We have two days. We have three days, right? We need to see everything because maybe what they've seen is not as important as something else. Maybe there's something else that is broken that you will find at the end after you've seen all of your session. So you really want to do that. And plus, what they see may not be what will happen in all, all of your sessions. Uh, we did not have a lot of sessions. So maybe it was even hard for us to see patterns. But let me ask you, did you see patterns? Did we start seeing patterns uh, among all of our participants? Do you feel that you've seen similar things very early on? Perfect. So that is part of one of the uh, 
one of the elements that you want to pay attention when we do the analysis is what are we seeing that is trending? What are the patterns that we're seeing? Uh, and uh, as we go through our notes and observations, but you still have to go through all of your notes and all of your observation. But yes, and the more participant you add, the more patterns you will find. But really, it's not until you've done all of your sessions that you can really start making uh, recommendations or really talk about the full story. So when your client says, I'm going to go to the office and make some changes, you say, hold off, hold off, wait. It may not be as much of an issue as we think. Uh, there may be other things that will come that will be more important. And then you say, hold on, we will do a debrief. Now, that debrief, they probably will want to come there. So the brief is where you can really have everybody who came and talked and seen to the sessions to actually give them a voice, give them a chance to actually say, so Shabam, you came to the session. Uh, what did you see? What, you know, what did you see from the sessions? And then you just listen and you make notes. And then you can do the same thing with my call. People, everybody will feel that the, the their voice. And then you just make those notes and take those notes as extra notes. It's just extra notes and maybe they're gonna help you to do your summary. Maybe they will help you to do your high level summary and uh, and then of a overview. It's a bird view of what maybe have happened and uh, it's just become supportive document to do your analysis and maybe your findings as well. So, uh, and then you do your analysis or sentences of your team's note as well. So this is what we're gonna talk more in details. So. And there's no easy way and there's no easy and there's no, there are no quick way and easy way of doing your analysis and your sentences of. So here's the approach that I have used in the past. Okay. There is no one recipe. So you all going to develop your own recipe. Um, and, uh, and then you pick an approach and you pick a recipe that will actually work with you. How you structure the analysis does not mean that this is how you will structure your final report. Okay, so maybe you want to structure your analysis and say, great, we all going to agree on a coding or we all going to agree on a way and perhaps everybody wants to do it individually. So maybe Michael has a specific way of going through his notes and documenting his finding his note and that's okay. We leave Michael do the way that he wants to do. Maybe the same thing with Hannah. So Hannah goes through her notes and she codes a note and we'll talk a bit more about this. You can all have your within your team different way of 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 grouping or noting or doing whatever you want with your uh, what you will find uh but and that's okay but at some point you will need to come back and and then agree on one uh one structure but you don't have to agree on the structure at this point then you don't have to talk about severity and prioritization either leave that for later okay so i'm trying to remove things for you to not be thinking too much too many things because then it, this is where it gets hard you, some of you may actually use sticky notes. Some of you may use Miro and say, okay, I'm going to create a Miro for each issue that I'm going to create Miro. It's up to you. Uh, and then you can use the sticky notes and then have issues, shopping cart, prob shopping cart problem, uh, problem with finding store locator, problem with finding returns, problem with findings. And then and then you can create a, uh, a, a card for each time that you find that problem into your notes too on Miro. And then you're going to see, wow, I've got 20 cards that says hard uh, difficulty finding the store, right? The store locator. Then you already get a sense of quantity. So you can, some of you will do that. Some of you may just use an Excel sheet uh, and uh, individual, and that's okay too. Or you may all agree that you're all going to go into an Excel sheet or go into a, a mirror wall and all put of your sticky notes too. What I have seen in the other class when I touched this course, um, most of them would actually use Miro and then use cards on Miro and do that little, uh, those and then put a card for each of the issues that they found as well. So if you use sticky notes, you will get a sense of quantity, how often has something happened. But remember, this is qualitative. This is not quantitative. So you're never going to get to this is statistically significant uh, and uh, we can reach in confidence that this is a, a really, really strong issue and we can fix it. Whichever issue you have found, uh, it was sufficient with the number of participants that you went in. And remember, three to five, the rule is five participant at least uh, per uh, target persona or target consumer. Uh, five is enough to see 80% of all of the issues. So I think I've shared this with you a while ago. 
uh, it will give you 80% of the core and the big problems that you will find. And the rest, adding more people than adding more people, you're just finding little things that is not as critical. The critical issues come out very, very quickly. And, uh, and then what you can say is most participants have an issue with, but you're not going to say 90% of participants because it's, it's a small number that we're dealing with, but you could say most participants or some participants. So this is like how you can play with most, some, but don't even worry yet because that's part of your reporting really. You can agree on a way to categorize the findings for your analysis. Maybe you want to create buckets and maybe there's a bucket that says generic across. Maybe another bucket that I that I do mean sometimes it's visual, visual or design. Then I'm going to have something maybe that will say check out because it's a big step. Maybe I have a category that talks about browse, listing, labels, navigation, flow, filters. You can decide on categories and labels. So you're kind of giving labels to the issues that you're finding. And then I go through all of my notes. Then I go scenario by scenario, one participant at a time. And then I start coding. So starting coding or listing what I have observed in my notes. So example, I actually go on my notes and I put nav for navigation. I put label, label. I put design, then maybe I say the scenario was fine guitars, and then maybe I want to put insights. Maybe there's something that I've noted that I've seen that was happening and, and, and I had a bit of a, 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 an opinion about why something was happening. Maybe there's a quote, maybe there was a recommendation. Maybe the participant made a recommendation about something. Maybe the participant had an idea about something. Maybe you had an idea about something as well. Uh, and this was for maybe the task fine guitars as well. Um, and then uh, maybe there was listing, maybe you want to then see there was a step where there was listing of guitars and then in listing of guitars, maybe just things that have happened and you may have different codes there too. So you may have labels, you may have uh, filters, you may have wordings, you may have whatever. So you would actually put that wording, nav and what you do and i will show you you actually put those codes maybe sometime on the on your left or right margins so at the end you would go and scan and scan and say nav and then you maybe you go to an excel sheet or you go to a mirror and you say nav sticker and then uh and then you know that finding guitars there was an issue for navigation and then you will give a bit of a description of what was the issue as well then you would do maybe for filters maybe for product details check out cart, maybe renting, maybe return scenario. So you could, at this point, you could structure your analysis according to each of the tasks. But here, what we've done is I've listed what the user goals were. So it's almost the order of the user goals, I would say at this point. And then you do all of your coding. We're not talking prioritization yet, and we're not talking um, the order if something is really bad or if it's something critical and when we should be fixing or not fixing something. Okay, we're going to do a live example. Before I do this, are there any questions about analysis or coding at this point? Are we feeling overwhelmed? Okay, so it's, it's normal. Let's go, let's do a real example. So if you remember, this is our scenario of um, Lululemon. I love to have the pen. I could have my pen. Okay, I'm going to try to do something here. I think I want to download the document so I can maybe do some marking. So let me just download and I'll be able to share on screen and use my pen. Okay, let's do this now. Share file. This step of coding, going through your notes, there's no way, there's no easy and quick way to do it. Unfortunately, but it's the most, it's a very critical step in your analysis. 
and this is true for any qualitative uh, study. So when we do qualitative studies, a big part of doing qualitative study and why qualitative studies are time consuming is about because there's no quick way of doing analysis and reporting like a survey, right? A survey, the answers are, are automated. Where qualitative, it's free form, right? It's free form. Everybody has to kinder note in a, in, a, in a different way. There was a bit of a consensus, but everybody has to kinder note in a different way. There's no quick way of actually uh, summarizing uh, everything that we have seen into uh, into our um, into our, a, a quick tool that can actually just spit, give you back or spit to you what the uh, what we've everybody has answered because it's all very free form. Okay, so let's go to the notes and observations. I'm gonna hide this. Okay, so. And I can use my pen. Perfect. So really, we're taking the notes. So I don't remember who whose notes these are. But this, let's say, this is my notes. This is me, my observation. So on my own, I will go through my own notes, and then I will start coding. So I know that I'm actually in. I want in the. Uh, I want to purchase some pens for yoga. So this is scenario one, and then I'm actually my structure for me is actually. Uh, going through each of the scenario from all of my notes and participant for participants. So um, very, very straightforward, right? And why can I not use my pen? Because it's not plugged in. is not really being friendly. Uh, okay, so and my mouse is not even wanting to be kind. Well done. That's not what I want to do. Okay, let's just quickly do this. And why is this not working? Okay, so the pen is not working, so I may just have to speak to the notes. So I'm in the scenario of purchasing yoga, and then I actually go to the first line, scroll down and look at the page. So this person had actually went and scrolled down to the page. Uh, there isn't really necessarily, it's, but there's something about scrolling down. Is that an issue or not? Probably not. But maybe I could have a annotation that talks about scrolling. And maybe we'll find that there's a lot of scrolling, right? I don't know yet. And this, I'm thinking loud with you. Um, so I may make a note or I may do something with scroll down and I may actually make a note of scroll down. And what I would do is in this case, I don't have room, but if I have room, uh, I could actually uh, type in, can I type in? I could actually maybe type in scroll. And I could do in all in capital letter when I do my coding in the margin so that I can see that there's something that talks about scrolling at this point. Uh, don't see men section. So, okay, so unable, so not able to see, so I can't see, cannot find, so unable to find. So then I would have probably another here that will say unable to find. That's my own coding, right? Uh, Man, so unable to find man. Some colors are not available. Then I would have another one that will say colors not available. And I told you the first one is really, really time consuming. Not available for this guy. Some are online, some are online only. Uh, we don't know if it's an issue or not, but maybe we could have a code that says online only. Uh, select the right size. So in this case, Okay, some colors are not available. So we have already three tags. Scrolling, I want to make sure that you guys are seeing my screen. No, you're not seeing. Yes, you are. You are seeing. Yeah. Uh, we have scrolling, unable to find, colors not available. 
then uh, some are only online. So we don't know, it doesn't seem to be, or maybe it is an issue, right? Online only. So maybe I have another code that says online only on my margin. Select the right size. So select the right size suggests that it's not an issue at this point. So I don't feel that I need to do anything with that particular item. I'm focusing at really at this point on problems. And that's maybe one way that you can start too. Want to pick up. Okay, so he wants to pick up, but maybe that to me, that suggests that not able to pick up. So perhaps I would hand have a code at this point. I would probably have uh, unable to pick up. As an article, want to pick up, can't find a closest location for pickup. Okay, so unable to find, unable to find location. I'm typing over, right? But this is not how you would do it. Uh, we'll have to ship it home. Okay, so what of the consequences of not able to find location to pick up? Maybe I want to say pick up. The more specific you are, the better. Uh, and uh, but you will have to see if you can be consistent, right? For the next participant who did the same scenario, we'll have to ship it home. And then uh, can I move these items when I typed in? Yeah. So let me put all of my code. I'm just gonna move all of my code in here. Unable to find colors not available. See free return and. If not fit, then he can return. Okay, so he was happy to see for return. Not, that's not an issue. I just think right this one. See an error message, wrong credit card. Okay, so what has happened with that error message, wrong credit card? Uh, let's see. Don't know where to find the closest score. Okay, so now you two, you want to go to the... Okay, so we've already moved uh, with this participant. So it looks like maybe we have a... Um, okay, so here. I just had to scroll down. CR message, wrong credit card number. Okay, so this to me is in the checkout, right? So then I would probably do checkout, wrong credit card. I don't know yet if it's an issue or not, but I'm creating this particular code. Checkout, wrong code, wrong credit card code at this point. Okay, so I have one, one participant done, and then now I move. So before I do this, any question on coding or what I have done at this point? Do we understand what we mean by coding? Has anybody done that yet with this uh, assignment for this for your study have you done this yet sort of okay but it's a very important step and i will say i want to see so in your submission in one of your submission not for uh in the final report i will want to see the coding or at some point you need to show me the coding so if you've done the coding for the submission that is coming up please insert it. But if you haven't, if you don't, I need to see the coding as an appendix in your final report. I really need to see what the code, how the coding was done. It's a very, very important uh, step. It's painful, but very, very important. Uh, why do I say this? It's easy to wanting to jump quickly to solution, which is too early. So I do need to see your coding. If we look at the notes that was taken for this first scenario for this participant. So in this scenario, uh, we wanted, I'm going to erase the code. We, you want to purchase some pens for yoga. You want to make sure you purchase the right size. So we give them uh, a task of buying. Uh, so finding, buy, selecting, going through the checkout and buying. So it sounds like they went as far as, you know, the wrong credit card number. But here, send an error message of wrong credit card number is normal because I would assume that in a test, we did not put a real credit card, right? So in this case, then it's an artifact of our uh, of our test. So we could probably just ignore this. This We do nothing with it, right? So uh, select the right size, good. We can ignore, didn't see men's section. That's a problem, right? Uh, C, woman, pant, okay, great. Some are online only, want to pick up that, then we'll have to ship it home. C, free return, it did not, and fit, if not, then can return. We can almost, as I said, we can ignore these elements and focus on the ones that were wrong. Then we see that it's a pass. 
then I would question this, okay? So this is where we have to be very careful. If at the end of, and you will see in reporting, in reporting, you could give me a compilation or to your client, all the past and all the failure. So which task actually passed? And you could do a summary and you will see that in some of the templates on your reporting. And again, there's no one recipient reporting, but I have shared with you three templates. Uh, you may want to do a table summary that lists all of your tasks. And then in this example, you would say, let's for Lululemon, purchasing pants for yoga, task number one. Scenario number one, you want to purchase some pants for yoga, you want to make sure you purchase the right size. Task number one, how many people pass or fail? So maybe Lululemon will report, and that's okay. You can do this if you want, but again, it's really just to give a quick glance of, do most people fail, do most people pass? So here, if I were to read uh, what was said, it says that it's passed, but I've looked at the video and I will say that it's a fail. And I will show you if we get to the video why I feel that it's almost a fail. Uh, and, uh, and then we have low, uh, no taker, severity. So don't worry about severity yet for your coding, but you can still look at your notes. You've said there's nothing that was low, medium, couldn't find a product he was interested on the main page. So yes, so I don't know this. So yes, he had a challenge finding the product and he had some challenges with filters and filters not being available for him. Uh, and uh, and then he also had the participant, one of the, look, he also had challenges with, he was actually very surprised by the high prices. Uh, and I feel that at some point he, I would have qualified as a fail, as a task. So um, maybe we'll be able to get to the video. But don't worry about severity at this point. But you may want to look back at notes that you've made, right? Uh, and then this is participant one for that task. Now, what you could do is you could go to the second participant that did the same task. So you move to another participant. Okay, so let's do, then you could move and do all of your task, one task, so that it's all fresh, right? You could do all of your first tasks for the note that you've taken and then do the same coding exercise. And I would say it's probably easier because it's it's all related and it's all fresh. Then your coding is probably gonna be fresh as well in your head. So let's do quickly, okay? Uh, you want to purchase, so we're still in the same purchase, and then we still do a coding. Let's see how we would do coding with this particular guy. Uh, man pants, so it sounds like he went directly to man pants. So we can almost say that we actually ignore, I'm just gonna scratch it, that we ignore. He doesn't like being forced to select a store location. Okay, so yes, and I think this is the person I was looking, doesn't like being forced to, so, Perhaps I have a code then. Here I will have a new code that will say forced select store. So it sounds that this participant fell or was under the impression that he was actually forced of selecting a store. We don't know yet if that was really the case or not. And this is where now you have to start doing some interpretation and thinking beyond what has happened. So he didn't like, and he probably said, I don't like the fact that I'm being forced to select a store location. Then what you have to do as a team is, is someone really forced? Was it really forced? So his understanding was that he was forced. And maybe if he felt that he was forced, he could have abandoned, but he continued because he was kind and he was in the session. But if he's at home and he thinks that he's forced, he, he could have abandoned, right? And maybe you go, well, that's a problem. Then is that a pass? then it almost becomes a fail. We don't know yet, right? Uh, okay, so doesn't like being forced. We've checked this one, we've coded, found pants too expensive. He had one short change, pen too short. Okay, so this is the one I was listening to. So yes, pricing. So you could have a code that says pricing or you could say expensive, boom. So you have a code for expensive and then maybe you can have expensive in code many, many times and you'll see it was mentioned 30 times. Okay, uh, and then what was interesting about this participant, he actually, yes, he moved away from looking for yoga pants and then he actually said, you know what, I usually buy shorts, I'm just gonna go for shorts. You will see the video if you were to listen to the video and I will say that, um, I forgot who moderated this particular session and uh, I think, I think, did I make a note of this particular session? Bernice, I think it was Bernice, she did very well. Bernice just, let him continue and that's what <coughs> she should have done because it didn't really make a difference if it was yoga pants pants or shorts 
uh, she still got what she was interested in finding all of the issues and we can see right from through the notes. Expensive, too expensive. It sounds like maybe it was mentioned twice that he said something twice about expensive. You can actually have them. You could repeat your code. I, we don't know. I don't know. But perhaps you would maybe have a sense. And sometimes if you don't, then you could go back. Uh, too expensive. Looking for a cheaper option. $50 or under. Okay. So then the question is, and I, I know I saw this video, 50 or under. He was not able to find a and, and filter by price. I remember in the session, he said, I want to actually filter by price usually. So this is where listening through the words and what they're telling you. And Bernice was really good at uh, with, you know, telling him to do think aloud, but he was actually very good in his think aloud. And then he said, uh, you know what? I usually filter by price because I have a price. And then he actually looked, he said, I don't see the price in the filter. I can't price. So he continued because in the session with us, but at home, he may have given up. So we need to have a code now that says unable, or you can say no price filter. Okay. You decide. Uh, so no price filter, expensive, no price filter, go to yoga accessories, only found yoga products. So he went to yoga accessories, only found yoga product. At this point, I don't know if this is an issue or not. So Bernice would know, or whoever has taken notes and observation, check out joggers because, and then couldn't find specifically your pants. Okay, so there is something here, right? Happening with yoga, that maybe we need yoga. Uh, yoga, there's something about yoga. We think of yoga and we actually told them to do yoga pants. But maybe people don't think of yoga pants. Maybe they don't, or when we think of yoga, they don't think of pants, they think of short. This could have been how we formulated our questions too. So we don't know yet, but uh, but I would make a note. I would actually make a note of, of our yoga. Um, and uh, so that at least we have capture that there's something happening with yoga. And then uh, couldn't find specifically yoga pants. Then I don't know if we have something a little bit more about this particular candidates. Filter, size 32, shy, likes what it shows, how many results. Yeah, actually, this participant, uh, he was really uh, paying attention to how many results. He did say, say, oh my God, there are 93 results. Like, I don't, I did not even have a chance to see it. So at this point, then uh, he likes, I kind of ignore. Uh, likes to remove free shipping and free return. So this is good, right? These are positive elements. At some point, you can go through your likes, or you could actually, if you want, you could do likes. Uh, and you could be very specific. Uh, $0 shipping, if you want. So you could have a likes. So I may have been ignoring them, but you could have a likes, and then you will have a number of likes that have been mentioned. But I'm more interested about the issues. But yes, we don't want to lose feature, right? Likes that it gives an estimated total. So at this point, these likes, I'm assuming that he said that he actually likes the free shipping, that he said that he actually likes the estimated total as well. He probably made a comment about autofill uh, in uh, address line. And now he had a problem with postal code. So we would then have a new code, postal code. And then uh, I don't know what the problem is. Doesn't recognize it without the space. Okay. Uh, it force a space. Then that's my new code. And I might find that this has happened with many other participants. So we have a new code, doesn't recognize it without no allowed to proceed. Okay, so there was a problem here. Okay. So did this person pass or this person fail? Again, we have a pass, right? But we see that postal code was an issue, the pricing was an issue, and uh, maybe there were other things that we haven't seen that was an issue. That is coding, very time consuming, but there's no other way. And this is where you are doing the real work. You're doing what I did, the interpretation, you're coding. And then I, what happens is, so let's pretend that I'm done all my coding. And then I go back and I start, I start tabulating uh, somewhere for selectors, I start creating maybe in Merrill, 
So I could do let's say Meryl. Or I could do an Excel sheet. Okay, let me share with you. So Meryl. Okay, now I go and I create a mirror wall and you could do, all do this if you wanted. Uh, <clears throat> one place, and actually I love the mirror. For this, for Friday's uh, liverable as well. Well, the summary, it's up to you, but the raw data, just put them into a Word document. But if you have already done your summary and you want to start doing your very high level summary, but I don't want the full analysis, the high summary, you can use mirror as well if it's an option for you. But really what I would do uh, is I would already start, if I were thinking of what we just saw, I would actually have a, uh, for each of the code that we have seen, I would start probably do post a code. And then we had another one that had uh, filter. I don't remember the exact. So I start now compiling in one place and then I go through all of my list. I really just go through my list and let's see if it's still here. It's probably all gone. Oh, they're still here. Okay, so force to select store. So then I have another one, force. And I could say, I can start almost creating a category that says store locator. And don't worry about structure, right? And then I could say forced select one. This one needs a bit of more investigation because we don't really know, but in the consumer mind and participant mind, there was an issue, right? Uh, and then expensive, okay, expensive pricing, right? Then I have a new one called pricing. Then I have one that says expensive. And maybe it was mentioned twice. Then I could say, I'm going to have expensive. And then you continue, no price filter. Okay, so pricing, expensive, no filter, you see? So I'm kind of creating a structure for myself, but I don't have to commit to this structure when I'm going to do my reporting. And this could be me. And we said it was something about yoga. Think of almost like, this is almost like a court sorting exercise, right? Kind of starting creating a court sorting exercise of the things, the issues, the issue stuff that you have found. Uh, and maybe there's going to be another one that you're going to see that yoga. And then, uh, okay, he likes. So maybe I have a bunch of likes. Then I have a bunch of items that can start listing my likes. And then I can say, shipping. And I had another one that says, at some point, I think I had a few likes. I don't, I haven't. Okay. And then I may have another category that will be starting creating. So you create your own wall in Miro, but you do this after you've done all of your coding. And now you know why the first one takes a lot of time. We've actually just went through two participants for one scenario. And maybe there's four participants, but you will start seeing that things are repeated. Uh, and would, but you will see new things like postal was new. There is no other other way. Uh, but it will get faster as you go through each of your participants, and then now and then you repeat this for all of the test scenario. Very time consuming, but it's probably the most critical piece. Uh, and uh, and then you could all agree if you wanted on a, on a, one mirror, and then everybody could just put their notes too. But everybody has to do their own coding individually. 
So you each have to do your own coding. And perhaps maybe it's even easier if you each do your own Miro, but at some point you all come back and say, here's what I found. And then you're gonna come you're gonna combine your findings and think of your findings as almost individual sort cardings that you have to bring together in one. But you should all see have seen similar things and maybe some new things as well, which should really happen, but there's no other way. No other way of going about the process of doing this. Are there any questions? It's, uh, Tanisha said, this is a sort of affinity mapping or is that, no, it's, it could be like an, it's up to, it's all, it could be affinity mapping, but uh, I haven't done too many affinity mapping. I would like to you, but you have to be, as long as you stay very specific to the facts, what you've seen, what has happened, and also look beyond, right? Look beyond uh, what uh, beyond what you've noted, because we had one or two example, <clears throat> the, the unable to filter on pricing, right? It's a challenge and he would have laughed. He didn't say, he didn't say it was an issue, but he said, I usually filter by, I usually, he didn't say it's an issue. He said, I usually filter by price. You know Lululemon doesn't support filtering by price. Then that's an issue. For him, he would have laughed probably, right? So there's a risk. You can see it's a risk. And then there's a little, it's, it's a risk. There's a risk for that particular uh, candidate. Michael, do we do our own coding for every user test or just the ones we took? I will say you just do the ones, the ones that you took. So everybody do this for the ones that you took. It's easier. Or, or you could all divide up, but it's easier if you do coding for the ones that you took because you will have the insights. It will come back. And it's actually a good thing to do the ones that you've done, Michael, because you're going to start seeing things that you didn't see because now you have the full picture. So it's easier if you do this one because you'll understand your notes, right? You'll understand what I meant. Uh, and that's, better and then but you have to come back and discuss you're gonna have to come back and discuss and and talk about all of your findings because i have this mirror wall but michael maybe you're gonna have something completely different but i'm gonna share i'll say this is what i found i find all these likes that that's that, that, yoga and then michael's gonna say oh my god i found the same thing with yoga too there was an issue with yoga uh i had an issue with the postal code or maybe michael will say there was an issue with the with the name we're forcing a certain format whatsoever. So there's the quick thing is there's no quick answer to actually go through all of the process. Um, and uh, and then this, I share with you one way that you can do it. Uh, this is not the only way, but that's probably the way that um, I, it's the way that I have used that I'm very comfortable. It works very well for me. And uh, it's uh, you have no choice. Like this is a step that you have to go to uh to really get to everything to all of your session and everything that you have done and everything that you have seen and that really has what has happened so the the presentation for today has a lot of a lot of more but the readings so if i go quickly through some of the readings let's see just week eight So analyze, analyzing usability testing data. So this is one of the reading that I have shared and uh, so don't worry about how you create your 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 structure for your own coding because you're not committing to a structure it doesn't mean that this is exactly how it will look into your report again don't worry about how bad this issue is uh you will have a lot of flexibility on how you you how you create your report and uh and then you can uh you can create all your findings per if you want per login you can do account overview you can do your payments you can say i'm going to put all my sticky notes around contact us around everything general that i have found but 
I, I will say this step, you don't even do this. You see, if you see me going to my board, I just went back to my code and I started creating almost categories for the kind of code that I had. And, uh, and then after that, at some point you can decide how am I gonna group in all of my cards into something that makes sense. Um, and that's more part of your reporting. So I encourage you to go through the uh, to th go through the readings that I have shared on uh, on the uh, on this week's. And I'm trying to see. <clears throat> so here's a. Let me just share this one. Here's a, another way there, that someone else, how they actually do, how they actually do their, uh, their grouping of all of their codes. Think of codes. I done my coding. I had codes. I had a set of codes, right? Unable to find the store locator, uh, no, no filter for pricing, um, no uh, postal code forcing, a, uh, no space on postal codes. I had like postal code. Da, da, da. So this person used Excel. At the end, she, me, I went to Miro. But she went to Excel and then she said, category search, find an item. So the task, so me, everything so far was in a task. And what I should do in my mural is put the task of finding a yoga pants, right? So I should say finding yoga pants, all these cards. Then you have uh, finding a store locator, all these cards. So here she's done that into an Excel. Then she's done search, find a red item. So the task was find a red item. The problem, user unable to locate filter features. So same thing, right? I have filters on filters, no price filter, no uh, color filter, no filter. And she said tag one filter confusion. So she even put tags, filter confusion. Like she went even, there's no one recipe. It's one. Now Excel is beautiful because I can sort, I can group, I can do things in Excel and see quantity more quickly than Miro. So that's the other benefit, right? But the goal is not to get to a quantity and significative and be, you know, statistically significant, but it will, it's to, to see all of your tags, to see all of the codes, everything, all the issues, uh, you will get a sense of quantity, but you will see the first one are very time consuming, but it will go quick, 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 quick. But everybody needs to do this and, and do it the way that works for them. So Bernice will do it for her, Michael will do it, but at some point, all has to come together. But I need to see all of the coding. I need to see what you've done for your coding and how you've done your coding. But uh, the report and the summary will I have from the team, right? So uh, you don't need to tell me we use the coding, but I just need to see coding in, in the raw, as a raw data, but not for Friday. But if you don't, if you do on Friday, great. If you've done certain analysis, but as an appendix, I will need to see the coding that was done. At least some snippets of what the coding looked like. Some snippets, because I know it's a lot of coding. It's 2.48, so we have two minutes left. So these are the readings and uh, there's probably two. No, in the report. So thank you uh, for uh, the question, Sydney. So in the report, no, I don't need to see the heuristic evaluation. I've seen, I've done, seen, Mark. No, we don't. And uh, okay, so on the report, because the report is due next week too. So, but we are going to meet until the report. I have created, I have added a link to some templates for reporting in um, on this week. So week eight, I have a section called analysis and report templates. Actually, you should also look there for uh, some inspiration for analysis and report. So I have three links that talks about reports. There is no one recipe for reporting again, but you will see that there are some patterns on reporting. And actually in those samples that I have shared with you in this folder, uh, there are some very good, some of the samples have a lot of good insights um, as well that they've added into, uh, into the template that I really encourage you to, uh, to look at. But you just have to pick one that you actually, uh, that you actually comfortable. There isn't one that I prefer, but the three samples that I have shared actually all have very common elements. 
So, uh, and there's different ways that you can group your findings, but don't worry about groupings yet. Don't worry about how you're going to do a report, but I have three templates. Please look at them. You could, um, and then you even can have codings, good, bad, like little symbols if you want. Pick one that you like. But typically, you're going to have, uh, you may regroup per user task. And you may say, we had five user tasks. And then the following task, we had all of the issues that we found. For the following task, critical issues, maybe lower, is mid issues, low criticality issues. Then you can say task number two, we found the following critical issues, not so critical, and uh, fix issues whenever you want to fix. You just have to agree on the terminology. And then you do this for all of them. But you could also do an executive summary and say we had five, five tasks and that you could see actually, most people actually fell on all of the tasks uh, to give like a sense of, wow, this is pretty bad or this is actually not bad. And as an executive, if you're a CEO of a company, you really just want to see, you may want to see one page through one page really what has happened. Uh, and this is where you need to be very, very condensed. There, some of the templates will give you some examples of how that, uh, how you would go about that. When going through the coding, as I said, are we creating a list of unique codes based on the notes per session or wanting to highlight the codes that reappear in the sessions during this stage? So Marisa, the coding is really for you as an exercise. At the end of the day, think of your coding as that like you're labeling issues, right? Your code is like you're labeling issue. So your code is a way for you to go quickly and scan and say, okay, filter, store filter. You could put them directly in Miro or direct them in Excel, but I will say that it's probably going to be very time consuming. It's up to you. Me, I like to, I like to actually write them on paper. <laughs> I actually do handwriting, which takes a lot more time. Uh, your coding is for you, but at the end of the day, your code is about an issue. It's about something that has happened, right? And the chances are other people have seen it too, right? It has happened with other observers too. So it will all make sense as you go through, but each has to go through their own notes and start doing coding. And I will say then sit down and see, talk about your coding, talk about what you found. Or perhaps before you start your coding, have a quick meeting and talk about now that we've talked about coding. But stay away from trying to have too much structure to your coding as a team. It will take time. It will be hard to agree on this on the convention. It's better if you, Marisa, you go, you do your own coding. And then based on what I've shown you, and then you come back as a team and you share your, your, your uh, overall findings from your coding. And then Michael will do the same. And then you'll go, OK. This all happened to me too. And then you and then you start, you want to finish with one set of findings. Like you want to amalgamate all your findings. Good. So we have to go and uh, enjoy the rest of your afternoon. If there are questions between now and now, you want me to extend Friday. But Friday, again, I don't need to see coding for Friday. I just need to see the raw data and a quick summary. Uh, do I extend Friday? And if I extend by to when? Monday or Tuesday? You will be on break now. Okay, so I will extend to uh, Monday midnight. Again, it's only this a quick summary of what you find overall, and uh, and then um, and then the raw data. And we're meeting again next week. Tomorrow we're meeting, but I'll be very shortly with you. You'll be with Asma. So enjoy the rest of your afternoon, and I will let Ivan know that uh, I've. Uh, I, you were, you went to, uh, on break at 254. Enjoy your, uh, the next section with Ivan.